drink of wine. What, uh, what now? Maybe you're, you're right. The war word is Vajuaros. Ah, uh, Bright, the industry's easy target. Netflix's first foray into blockbuster filmmaking was absolutely destroyed by critics, and it was even publicly dunked on by Chance the Rapper. It was directed by David Ayer, who also directed the similarly notorious Suicide Squad, and that connection added even more fuel to the Bright bashing fire. This movie was the critical failure of 2017, yeah, I know critics aren't always right. There are films like Jennifer's Body, Fight Club, and even Blade Runner that were critically panned but garnered cult followings of devoted fans anyway. But Bright really, genuinely, actually sucks. At best, it's a lazy and bloated blockbuster, and at worst, it's legitimately offensive. So Bright is a buddy cop fantasy film set in an alternate universe Los Angeles. In this world, nine races live together in America. Humans, orcs, elves, fairies, and uh... Well, we don't really see much of the other races, aside from a quick glimpse of a centaur cop and some signs with lizard people on it. So, they don't really matter. Fairy lives don't matter today. Elves represent the upper class, humans are the middle class, and orcs are the lowest of the low, hated by just about everyone else, and frequently targeted and brutalized by the LAPD. Despite police brutality against orcs, there is now an orc police officer on the force by the name of Nick Jacobi, played by Joel Edgerton. Jacobi is paired with Ward, played by Will Smith, and unfortunately for him, Ward is just as racist as the rest of them and wants Jacobi gone. The two find themselves tangled in a web of conspiracy and madness when they stumble upon an elf named Tika and a magic wand. What is that? What is that? The biggest and most obvious problem here is the lazy social commentary. Right from the very beginning, it's made obvious that the orcs are supposed to represent African Americans. Graffiti displayed over the opening credits shows orcs holding up black power fists. The LAPD beating orcs all the time is a direct reference to the LAPD's notorious history of police brutality. Orcs are also often shown working as chauffeurs, janitors, and occasionally as professional football players. They also often wear chains and baggy basketball jerseys. It's mentioned that there is a lot of gang violence amongst orcs and so on and so on. The allegory here is not subtle. Sometimes Bright gets really frustratingly close to making a genuinely interesting parallel. For example, other officers on the LAPD constantly call Jacobi a diversity hire, and call him orc slurs, and other orcs hate Jacobi for being part of the system that oppresses them. It's an obvious parallel for how the black community distrusts the police, leading some to view black police officers as traitors. And then, of course, those black police officers are also victims of racial profiling and harassment by their own co-workers. It's a multifaceted, multi-layered social issue, and Bright explores that by, um, having officers put kick me signs on Jacoby's back. It feels like the writer, Max Landis, did a quick Google search about racism within the police department, and then had the LAPD characters he wrote simply repeat variations of the three things he learnt. He's a diversity hire. Get him out of here. He's dangerous. Hey, it's been 15 minutes. Have we mentioned that we think this guy is a diversity hire and that he needs to leave? And so on. It's very shallow and very repetitive. Actually, if you think about the orcs are stand-ins for African Americans concept for too long, you realize that it's so poorly conceived it practically circles back to being regular old racism. Now, fantasy racial allegories aren't inherently wrong or bad. Take a look at franchises like the X-Men or the Planet of the Apes that pull these themes off successfully. They work largely because the mutants and the apes in each respective franchise have nuance. The audience is presented with stereotypes about the oppressed groups, and then it's shown that they're just as human as anyone else despite their differences. However, when it comes to Bright, the stereotype here is that orcs are violent and dim-witted, which isn't really disproven at any point. The only orcs you see besides Jacobi are shown as being violent, stupid, or just general assholes. In the film's universe, the orcs are apparently genetically predisposed to violence. They become blooded to be considered a true orc, and they all have blood clan ties that they follow, which leads to gang violence. Even the Fogteeth gang, which are run by orcs who promote racial unity, are still shown violently beating Jacobi and Tika. Fairy lives don't matter today. I don't really think the film intended to be racist or suggest that people of colour are dumb and violent. Mind you, I think the movie has good intentions, but the messy execution totally shoots those good intentions in the foot. On the flip side, elves are the upper class, and even though there are evil groups of elves called the Inferni, they're given significantly more power in America than other races. Elves are more likely to be bright, which means that they're able to wield powerful magic wands that can grant them any wish. 
If someone who isn't a bright touches a wand, they get vaporized and turned to dust on the spot. The only thing that feels adequately explained is the concept of brights and wands. People are so consumed by the desire to have their wishes granted, that they're willing to risk being poofed into fairy dust. This is a really interesting opportunity to explore disparity in America, right? Social mobilization is so difficult that people risk their lives just in case they're one of the lucky few non-elf brights. Unfortunately, the movie doesn't explore this further, because of course it doesn't. No, instead we get to hear about how one of the corrupt cops wants to steal a magic wand to wish his dick bigger, or quote, marry the girl who didn't blow him at the prom. There are so many missed opportunities here, but instead we get things like Will Smith yelling incoherent lines like, fairy lives don't matter today. Human racism doesn't seem to come up, aside from an offhanded remark from one Officer Rodriguez, who says he still gets shit about the Alamo because he's Mexican. So, does that mean that racism is still around among humans, or what? A black character says the n-word at one point, so does that mean that some horrific anti-black things happened in the past? Maybe. I don't know. But neither do the filmmakers, and that's the problem. There are countless other issues with the world building too. There is more world building in a two minute YouTube video published by Netflix titled Bright, The History of Magic than there is in the entire movie. I'm not a fan of huge amounts of exposition at the start of a film, but I'll gladly welcome it if it's gonna help add cohesion to the script. The movie throws away too much information at the viewer at once, resulting in an incoherent, muddled mess. There's some sporadic talk about a war that happened 2000 years ago in the film, and the results of this war are why the orcs are so demeaned in society. As Jacobi puts it, orcs were on the wrong side in the war against the Dark Lord. But who is the Dark Lord? Well, that's never really explained, but apparently he was an evil elf. Meanwhile, an orc named Jirak personally defeated the Dark Lord with his army, the Shield of Light. So, elves are powerful and orcs are hated because orcs saved the world from the elves? Orcs save the day, but elves are the ones we're cool with, even though there are elves like Inferni who are actively trying to resurrect the Dark Lord. What's going on here? This should have been spotted in the first draft of the script. Don't expect to learn much more about Jirak either, because his legacy isn't explained. There is some kind of prophecy about him, but the exposition is very blink and you miss it. Jacobi mentions to Ward about halfway through the movie that Jirak was an unblooded orc just like he was, who fulfilled the great prophecy. But what is the great prophecy? Well, they don't specify what that is either. It's just like a prophecy. In addition to all the half-explained exposition, the audience is also supposed to be following a plot about LAPD internal affairs trying to fight Jacobi, a plot about the evil elf cult, corruption within the LAPD, some investigations from the magical task force of the FBI, and you're supposed to absorb all of that before a Hispanic gang is suddenly introduced to ignite a gang war over the magic wand. It is the worst case of too many cooks in the kitchen. By the way, did you know this movie is an allegory for racism? Is that clear? If not, don't worry. The gang members literally refer to Ward as Jacobi's master. It's a slavery joke, get it? Aesthetically, the movie is, in my opinion, really bad. Take the graffiti at the very beginning of the movie. Tags that say curse the police are eye roll inducing in their complete lack of subtlety, not to mention they look straight up ugly. There are some downright bizarre musical choices too. When Ward shoots down his corrupt officers, the movie suddenly shifts into a slow-mo shootout scored by Bastille. The diegetic sound goes silent in favor of the music, and the lyrics that ring out while the shots are being fired are British? We're in LA. They couldn't have picked another song, or even just used a different section of the song. This pulled me right out of the moment so bad that I had to pause the movie for a second and stare in disbelief. Not to mention, for a movie called Bright, it's pretty damn dark. I found myself squinting to try and follow these dimly lit action scenes. There was some neat action going on, with elves busting through windows and doing backflips. Unfortunately, I couldn't see much of it. They must have used the same lighting guys that worked on The Long Night. You can always see the After Effects glow of that magic wand though. Truly, I do not know how this movie managed to cost over $90 million to make, because the effects aren't terribly impressive. I guess they spent most of it on the orc makeup and the CGI on that one centaur cop. Just as a reference point for comparison, The Fellowship of the Ring, which is set in an entirely fantasy world filled with creatures, different races, and magic, and is also almost three times as long as Bright, cost the same. The acting is fine, it's perfectly serviceable, but there's nothing to write home about. 
Will Smith is doing his best with what he has, and he throws in some amusing ad-libs like, Let's do it right now. We're gonna titty bar gunfight die. At least things like that gave me a legitimate chuckle or two. Joel Edgerton actually makes Jacoby seem quite charming, but his performance can't give Jacoby the emotional depth he needs to make any of this land. As for Tika, I don't know what the hell Lucy Fry is doing over there. To be fair, her performance probably isn't her fault, since Bright barely fleshes out her character. She's left to twitch and yell the same elvish warning calls about intruders coming to steal the wand in between Ward and Jacoby's contrived conversations about racism. Tika's only personality traits are magic and crazy. Tell me about it. Hey, follow me. Let's go. Tika! The main trio of characters leave a lot to be desired in general. Ward is just blatantly racist, so it's hard to root for him. Corrupt officers constantly threaten to attack his family, which is why he goes along with their plans for a while. I guess we're supposed to like him for being a family man, but realistically, his motivations are still very selfish. Plus, we barely get to know his family, so why should we care if he cares about them? As I mentioned before, Tika is severely underdeveloped, and on top of that, has no chemistry with Ward or Jacoby. Whenever she appears, it almost feels like she's in a completely different scene entirely. Jacoby is the only character really worth caring about, but considering the fact that he wants to remain a cop, despite the systemic abuse of other orcs, really puts a damper on his likability. At one point, the dude talks about how much he wants to stay a cop, while human LAPD officers are literally beating the shit out of an orc in the street next to him. Honestly, it feels like Netflix designed this film to be watched while sitting on the couch and only half paying attention. That way you can just blame the lack of coherency on your game of Candy Crush, read some articles that explain the plot better than the actual film does, and walk away convinced that Bright had something good going on after all. I mean, despite all the flack it's received, Bright is still greenlit for a sequel, and its Nielsen ratings are through the roof. 11 million Americans streamed it within the first three days of release. So who knows, maybe me and the critics are the ones who are wrong. I'll leave this off on an optimistic note. There are a lot of interesting things that are still left to be explored in Bright's world. And since Landis got canned as a writer after multiple sexual abuse allegations, an heir was replaced with Now You See Me director, Louis Le Terrier. It's possible a team that's competent could elevate the story. Bright too could be a damn masterpiece, tying up all those loose ends perfectly. Or maybe it'll be just as bad, and we'll end up with a movie where centaurs represent Asian Americans or something. Who knows? I just hope they get Joe Rogan to make a cameo again. That's now in the LAPD force. How does that work? He's not blooded. He's not part of any blooded clan. He's like a finger that got cut off the hand. With that being said, I'm curious to hear what you guys actually thought about the film. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was a good concept that was squandered? Please let me know in the comments below. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Watch! Tried to do us over a wand! We have a wand!